Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about switching programming languages. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, as usual, another great video and such clear guidance. Why well, thank you, I do try. I would like to know your thoughts on switching from Java to Go for a developer with 9 plus years of experience. Though it will be difficult to justify the hands-on for sure. I got a chance to work with Rx Java lately, coming from an imperative style of core Java for almost 8 years, and it's been a year now and Rx Java still leaves me scratching my head for a while. I'm thinking to move out of it. Well, uh, I can completely understand that uh, because uh, in my experience at the very least the people who go in the who go in like die hard into Java uh, this is not all I want you to be completely like just on the on the level with me here I'm in no way saying that a Java developer is subpar to any other developer what I'm saying is that the Java ecosystem of developers and like the overall community is a lot more conservative and a lot more, I'm not saying lazy, but set in their ways in many situations. Now, that doesn't mean that you're bad developers, you're awesome developers, and I would say that most of the most useful things that you could possibly learn about domain driven design and like corporate level development is found in Java or C. -sharp. These are my favorite languages for like corporate level development, but the thing we need to be honest about is that most Java developers, that at least that I've met, they're not out there experimenting in the same way or to the same extent as someone who's working in JavaScript, for example, where everything is basically the Wild West. So if you have been working for nine or eight, sorry, eight years in just Java, odds are, unless, as I said, unless you are a bit of a an outlier in the norm that the switch to Rx Java must have been pretty hefty for you. It must have been a bit of a contrast, and I can completely understand that because not only, I mean, you're still doing Java. It's just that, as you were saying, you're doing imperative style, and I'm not even going to touch the fact that you're doing imperative. Well, we, I'm not going to talk about that because I don't know exactly what you mean when you say imperative style. But yeah, I have some thoughts on that. Uh, but the fact that you go over to Rx Java and that you don't like it, there's nothing wrong with that because you're basically changing your paradigm of working. Uh, because doing stream-based, what basically what that is, is about stream-based programming. And stream-based programming or doing stream-based work is a lot different from how most people are used to working in Java. It's like it's like a complete. It's, it's the difference. I would say is sort of the same as if you went from Java to say Scala. Maybe the like the Scala. I will give you that the Scala difference is a little bit because Scala is like super super big, but it's still at the same level. So I don't find it the least bit weird that you might find that this is a head scratcher for you. But here's the thing, I don't think that you should feel all that bad, honestly, about just admitting that stream-based programming is not for you because you don't really have any reason to do it. If you, cause that's the thing, right? I know that this might not go over so well with the stream-based programmers, but let's, just, let's, guys, let's be adults about this and say that there are certain paradigms of working that are extremely good for a specific use case. But let's also admit that there are some of us who do like to use things that are right for one context and then we fall in love with that and become really enthusiastic about it and then we do that thing you know where yeah you have this tool that I feel really comfortable with and I love it let's just apply that to all the things and I just don't think that's a good idea and I probably never will and I'm at least I think I'm mature enough to say that it's the sort of mindset that I wish everybody had and like I'm not perfect but I try to think about those things. I'll give you an example. So I've worked with many co-workers who basically their process for scaling a system is literally this. What do I like working in? What is my favorite tool stack? Regardless of what that is and 
how can I optimize all the things to fit my works, my personal work style? And then they don't document anything and they work in their own little bubble for a few months or a year or something like that. And then they realize that, uh, wow, well, I don't find this all that interesting anymore or like I'm going to move to another project, I'm going to do something else. And then they basically have this mystery bag that is tailored to them and all the things that they care about. Nothing's documented. The only person who knows anything about it, about it is them. And sure, for them that's a good thing, but it's a pretty shitty situation to hand over to somebody else. It's a dick move in my opinion. It's a real dick move. It's a, I would go as far as to say that I consider it unprofessional. And I'm very sorry to say that I've met more than a few people like this. And what I usually do when I see this is that uh, if I'm not the manager or if I'm not the tech lead or like something like that, I, re I basically report it in a very nice way because that's the thing, right? You When you report people like this, you basically... Well, it's basically telling on somebody, so you have to do it in a good way. But you raise your concerns, that's what we call it. You raise your concerns and see what happens. If your manager doesn't listen to you, there's nothing to do about it. If you are the manager, fire that idiot immediately. Because the it doesn't really matter, and this is what I like to say to people, people are very afraid of hiring the wrong junior. And I go and I say, I'm equally, probably more scared of hiring the wrong senior because then you get this stuff. Then you get Arx Java in something that doesn't require stream-based programming that can slow, d like I'm not saying that you're like the master of programming just because you have nine years, because that's the problem with saying that you have an amount of years. So I can't tell much, like, I mean, I can. that's an indicator, but it doesn't mean skill. I've interviewed enough people now who have, like they claim 12 years and can't tell me what a like what an HTTP verb is, or like a, what the methods are. So, yeah, it doesn't like years is not the main factor for me. It's at the, I I I'd like to say that there's a tell to every single software developer CV. If you have nine years of Drupal or WordPress or similar sorts of things, that tells me something about you. If you have nine years of diehard like Java programming at like fairly serious IT companies that tells me a different thing so I don't think that you should be so worried about making the switch and like not uh, just accepting that ArxJava is not for you because the reality is that it's I, honest to God I don't know what you're working on but it's very unlikely that the project you're working on needs ArxJava because this, I mean, sure, you can say that stream-based programming is useful for everything, but it really is, like, you can do it in other ways. And I love functional programming, but you're never going to see me say that, hey, you know what, I'm going to start working for this gigantic corporations with varying levels of software developers, and I'm going to force everybody to use monads. If you're an architect level type of character and you do something like that, you should be shot in the street, if you ask me. So what I want you to take away from this is that doesn't really matter if you can't deal with ArxJava or something like that. You can absolutely make a switch from Java to Go or something like that. I don't think that you should hang so much emphasis on the fact that you have nine years of programming experience because it really comes down, as I like to say, it's quality that matters. If you have nine years as a Drupal developer or you nine years of this like in, in Java world, if you're just working on low-end things that doesn't really require much from you as a software developer, you're worth nothing to the industry at large and that's what I like to call a you're probably not that type of person because Java is a little bit less accessible but uh, when I meet whenever I'm interviewing front-end developers this is usually what I see or PHP developers or Ruby developers or well, basically Node.js developers anything that is very accessible in terms of programming languages with less focus on academics and computer science I usually find a lot a lot a lot of what I call bootcamp level developers. And as long as you're sure that you're not a bootcamp level developer, it should be fairly safe for you to make the switch to Go. Because, I mean, Go, even though it's, di it's very different from Java, it's like the constructs are still there. If you have a solid background in Java, you can basically work in anything apart from some very specific languages. I mean, you're going to pick it up. If you manage to at least pick up ArxJava, making the switch to Go shouldn't be a problem for you. Have a great day.